What's going on guys, it's Omni York and today I'm bringing you a brand new video where I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite legendary and epic commander pairs in Rise of Kingdoms. Now this is a request that I've gotten a ton of different times. People always ask me like, who's the best epic commanders that I could be pairing with my legendaries? And this is a totally reasonable request because legendary commanders are hard to get. And let's say you only have three legendary commanders. Well, that means you can have one full march of legendaries with a third one left over. Who do you pair him with? Or could you potentially pair all three legendaries with their respective uh, epic counterparts? And then you have three decent marches out in the open field. Now I am of the opinion that you should focus on having a few quality marches as opposed to a bunch of average power marches because you're you're going to get way more wrecked as a free to play player if you don't focus all of your power into one or two marches but the pairs i'm going to talk about in this video a lot of them are actually really really solid almost as good as two legendaries and of course this is by no means every single possible usable pair these are just the ones that i think are, are usually the most effective and we're going to talk about what each one of their roles are and this video is going to be broken down by infantry cavalry archers and mixed troops but first let's cheers and guys while you're here don't forget to like the video i recently found out that likes on youtube videos helps it get exposed to way more people and that helps my channel a ton and it only takes you guys a fraction of a second it costs no dollars and if by the end of the video you didn't like it why don't you just uncheck that button and take it back take it back i don't deserve it if i don't deserve it i don't deserve it anyway let's jump right into these commander pairs okay so the first commander we're going to talk about it's richard okay everybody knows richard is a commander that i feel strongly about and i think he's a great commander to use as a free to play or a low spender and that's really what this video is geared towards right if you're looking to use epic commanders that means you're probably a free to play player so we're going to talk about richard as a 5511 or a 5551 that's another you know possible combination and now that we have the skill lock feature in the game the absolutely and utterly embarrassingly useless skill lock feature might i add in my opinion it's just my opinion but i think it's pointless you could of course lock the first two skills or lock the first three skills and still bring richard all the way up to six stars and i like to think about commanders as interchangeable parts right and i think the most valuable legendaries in this game are ones where you can pair them with a lot of different commanders and they do really really well right so i'm going to be giving you multiple options for all of these commanders and you can decide what you want to do with them based on what what you need right there's no one best pairing with richard right because you could do multiple things with him so we're going to give two richard pairs here we're going to start with a 5511 or 5551 richard with joan right this is a really calm this is a common pair right this is a common pair in open field fighting and for the record pretty much everything in this video is going to be for open field fighting or for canyon right unless i say otherwise uh because that's mainly what you're going to do as a free-to-play player or a low spender you're really not going to be leading rallies or like defending objectives with epic commanders it's just not gonna happen right so keep that in mind pretty much everything in this video open field and canyon but a richard joan is a really really tanky pair uh, and it's also super valuable in the open field right because joan is really valuable especially if you're playing alongside a bunch of whales right if all of your alliance is a bunch of whales and you're just giving them these amazing absolute savage four second buffs with a ton of rage and you're increasing the normal attack damage that richard is putting out now richard does not put out much damage okay so really his normal attack damage is all that he has and so joan of arc buffing that by 25 percent is really really solid this is a nice pair and what i love about this pair so much is that not only is joan gonna stick around for a while because richard is tanky but usually richards get left alone typically in the open field or they get attacked last now when they see the joan that may be a different story of course but for the most part you should be able to kind of fly under the radar with that Richard and that's super super useful the other pairing with Richard that I could recommend is Sun Tzu of course Sun Tzu has some rage regeneration he has some skill damage that Richard is missing and he boosts that skill damage and he also buffs infantry infantry health is a very premium stat and you reduce damage taken even further so there's amazing synergy here this is a great pairing if you don't have Yi Song Ye you could do Richard with Sun Tzu and that's a really really nice pairing next let's talk about Martel because Martel is a commander that you're going to get over time for free and again with the skill lock feature you could bring them to five five one one 
and that's really good right this last skill is incredible but you know of course with the skill lock feature being just subpar you can't force skills into this one unfortunately so you'll have to get lucky but regardless my two recommendations with martel are going to be the same two recommendations you could pair martel with joan and this is going to be a similarly tanky build to richard but i think that martel is a little bit less tanky than richard but deals a little bit more damage right because he doesn't have the healing he has a shield instead which mitigates damage but he also increases he elevates his own damage for four seconds and he also has that counter attack damage on his last skill so yeah i think martel is just a little bit less tanky and does a little bit more damage so um that's a solid pairing and then of course martel with sun tzu obvious reasons right you're the same reason you would pair sun tzu with richard you, you're adding some damage factor to martel which you generally lacks which is amazing you're adding that health and all that good stuff then you may be saying omni arc okay i only have one joan and i only have one sun tzu who do i pair with who i would recommend richard joan and martel sun tzu i think that's probably the way that i would go because again martel i think just deals slightly more damage than richard uh it's not much but it's slightly more right um and Sun Tzu is more about dealing damage. Now, of course, if you have Martel Sun Tzu, Martel's primary skill is going to pop off and it's going to increase all of your damage by 30% for four seconds. Well, guess what? Sun Tzu is going to hit them with that AOE right after that. So during that 30 second window, boom, you're AOEing things down, which is great. You're going to get more rage and you're going to pop that off over and over and over again. So I think Martel and Sun Tzu is actually a really solid combo um, that I think is really, really good. So I would say Richard Joan, um, Martel Sun Tzu, but of course you can switch them if you want to. That's like I said, they're both, they're all good pairs. They're all good things that you could do. Now, one more thing uh, with Martel, right? And I guess you could technically do this with Richard as well, um, but you can pair one of them and, and I would probably say Martel is a slightly better option, but you could pair one of them with Scipio or CPO, however you want to say it. Don't roast me in the comments, but you can pair them together for your Sunset Canyon tank, right? This is actually a pretty good strategy. CPO is actually solid in Canyon. He really is because you're gonna get 10% more troops which is really good in Sunset Canyon and you are increasing counterattack damage damage taken reduction there's a lot to love here now also you're gonna get below 40% of troops remaining right which is gonna give you that healing factor and this is it's rare right most of the time you're not gonna use Scipio in the open field and have below 40% because at that point you're just pretty much dead right but this is guaranteed to happen in Sunset Canyon every single time pretty much right unless you're just destroying the, the enemy in which case it doesn't even matter but yeah this is surprisingly good in canyon cpo brings a ton of troops has a lot of synergy with these tanks so i would say martel 5511 with cpo in your canyon solid choice there next we're going to talk about alexander now the thing about alexander is you know you really you could do him 5511 or you could do him 5551 or whatever the case might be uh, i recommend expertise in alexander even if you're a free-to-play player i would say expertise ysg expertise alexander i think that's a really solid strategy um so whatever your alexander is at he should be your primary and pair him up with sun tzu um this is a really solid pairing alexander and sun tzu have a lot of synergy um obviously they're both going to be dealing some amount of skill damage alexander has his shield which is nice I mean Alexander has a ton of stats he has the infantry and attack tree there's a lot to love here and then Sun Tzu of course AoE rage regeneration lots to love about that so um really great pair this is AoE damage all the way it may be a little bit less tanky than the other marches we've talked about before but hey if you want to deal damage this is probably the best one that we've talked about so far for free to play players but of course Alexander again I do recommend expertising him however however much you have in him is is pretty solid regardless finally this is going to be the last infantry uh, march we're going to talk about is a constantine 5511 with joan of arc of course we've talked about only two epics in this video so far besides cpo and that's for good reason these are incredible epic commanders now a constantine 5511 is really 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 low damage output but it is really nice uh, in a nice supportive march right so a constantine joan is going to be very valuable in the open field not for you necessarily but for everybody else around you for the same reason that richard would be except um constantine has his own support elements in his primary skill as well attack reduction damage taken reduction really great stuff here on constantine for only 190 legendary commander sculptures this is also insanely good in sunset canyon constantine joan you see all the time in front of an Ethelfled YSG because of the support tree here on Constantine adding the slowdown effect to the march that you're hitting that means Ethelfled in the back row is going to absolutely nuke them which is amazing plus YSG's nuke 
awesome stuff here. So Constantine Joan is another really solid, relatively cheap pairing that you could do with a legendary and an epic. With that being said, let's move on to the cavalry. We've got a few a few marches we can talk about here with cavalry. First, we're going to talk about Cao Cao. Now, the problem with Cao Cao is you can't do 5511, right? So you don't really have any control over where your skills go. So how easily you could get a Cao Cao that's usable is, you know, it, it's up to randomness, unfortunately, because Lilith won't let you choose the skills that you unlock no matter what they say skill lock is not a thing i don't know what this i don't know what this system is that they implemented but to me it's not skill lock it's just skill restriction and it's pretty much pointless because it's the same as okay you, you you guys know my 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 thoughts and opinions okay but anyway i would say really what you would want from Cao Cao is to have at least three skill points in this third skill that's like the minimum where you would want to use him um and then that's that that is what it is obviously you want the first skill at five so if your Cao Cao is five whatever three whatever then you could probably use him as a primary in the open field or in canyon um you could pair Cao Cao primarily with belisarius and the the reason that you would do this is to kill farmers right if you're killing enemy farmers you want to be super super fast you have the mobility tree on Cao Cao. i would make Cao Cao your primary although it doesn't really matter i guess because the idea is to just not get caught in the open field right and belisarius helps a ton with that now this fourth skill is what makes him so good at killing farmers because you are going to hit those farmers below the 50 percent mark and once you do you're going to get a huge damage bonus which is incredible and you also are just debuffing them while you're doing it and you can typically run away um, from enemies really really quickly right once you leave battle 50 percent march speed for 10 seconds you are out of there so this is a great combo again Cao Cao Belisarius good for killing farmers now you could also do a Cao Cao primary Pelagius secondary now Technically, I would say Pelagius primary is probably actually better because of the skill tree. It's just, I think the skill tree is better than the mobility tree for PVP content. Uh, it's just going to deal more damage because you're going to get that rage regeneration. So yeah, um, most of the time you want to go full cavalry tree and then get the rage regeneration from the skill tree. However, the problem with Pelagius primary is that if any enemy sees a purple commander emblem on the open field, no matter who it is, you're going to be the first one to get melted. So at least by having it Cao Cao, still probably going to get melted, but at least by having it Cao Cao, you can kind of blend in a little bit with the other legendaries out in the open field. But regardless, Cao Cao prim primary or secondary with Pelagius is nice. You do single target damage factor. This is a very, again, very fragile, very risky march. But I think it's one of the better pairs that you can do with cavalry as a free to play or low spender because they both are doing really similar things, right? They're both doing single target damage factor. The benefit of Pelagius over somebody like Bybars is actually you're getting some nice rage regeneration here, which you're gonna need if Cao Cao is primary. You also get 30% of stats, which is great. The problem with Bybars is he gives you just 20% of attack. That's the least valuable stat, really. Um, so here you get 15% defense and 15% attack. This is a really solid combination, and you're getting some healing as well, which you're going to need. Your Cao Cao does some healing too, so there's some nice uh, synergy between these two commanders as well. Let's talk about someone other than Cao Cao here for a second. We can talk about Saladin, my boy, Salad Man. Where you at, boy? There he is. So Saladin's going to be a little bit more of an investment than Cao Cao, for example, but I would recommend a 5551 for him. It's still a really good investment if you are a cavalry player. He's a very, very powerful open field cavalry uh, commander. Really great in Canyon as well. So you could pair Saladin with a Sun Tzu. Now you might be saying, Omniarch, Sun Tzu is an infantry commander. Well, that's sort of true, but really he only gives 10% of stats to infantry. Everything else is just generally universal, right? Even the damage taken reduction is for any troop type, not just not just um, infantry, right? So you have uh, Saladin, who is a nice single target damage factor, generally tanky, brings you a ton of stats, which is really, really nice. Some march speed reduction there, which is great. Healing effect reduction, great stuff on Saladin. In. Sun Tzu adds some rage regeneration to that mix, some AOE to that mix, and he buffs the skill damage, which is nice, and you take even less damage here. So this is actually a really nice combination. It's not exactly the most intuitive, but certainly something that you could do if you haven't invested in any of the other infantry marches, but you do have a Sun Tzu laying around waiting to be used. This is something that you could you could do now if you're talking about a canyon team you could actually do a saladin with by bars i think this is nice for canyon because again saladin just generally an incredible commander but by bars uh, unlike pelagius has that aoe right and that's really actually a powerful aoe 
for a epic commander um, and so you're going to be dealing a lot of damage uh, with by bars with his aoe in sunset canyon which is nice you also get the extra attack but really these last two these aren't going to do anything in sunset canyon but regardless i think if you're talking about sunset canyon performance and you do happen to have a saladin i think by is probably the best epic that you could pair with him just for the aoe alone and the stats now one last thing let's talk about minamoto right because it is possible if you're a low spender that you have a 5511 minamoto this last skill is actually really good but we can't guarantee that we get it so you know I say 5511, but if it's a 5515 or 5513 or something, then that's even better, right? Um, but Minamoto uh, with Pelagius is actually a really, really solid combination. Um, both of them are doing a really nice single target damage factor. They both give you a ton of stats for your cavalry. Minamoto's got that march speed, which is nice, and Pelagius has the rage regen with the healing factor. So nice synergy here, nice single target damage factor, and you know it's a legendary epic pair that doesn't really cost that much. However, you do have to spend real money in order to get it okay let's talk about some archer pairs okay now obviously we're going to be talking about ysg here right okay so kusunoki in ysg this is a really nice pair and i actually see this in sunset canyon as well really powerful stuff here um this primary here on kusunoki is almost as good as the expertise on theodora who is a legendary you're removing every debuff beside the only thing that doesn't get removed apparently from kusunoki is burn but literally everything else gets removed. So yeah, even stat reductions, everything like that is removed from Kusunoki. So if you have a Kusunoki primary, Sun or YSG secondary, uh, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna remove all the debuffs and then YSG is going to hit them with his nuke, which is good. That's what you want to do. You don't want to be debuffed when his nuke goes off. You want it to deal as much damage as possible, right? You're also getting a ton of stats here for your um, for your archers with YSG. You're also dealing some nice AOE damage with Kusunoki as well, which is cool, right? So really solid pairing. Again, I do see this in Sunset Canyon. Uh, even at some of the higher levels, this is still really solid. So you could do Kusunoki primary uh, because again, you do want to remove those debuffs before YSG hits. But um, the other thing is, you know, if you, again, they, if, if there's a purple plaque in the open field, it's going to get hit first. And you know, I guess it's hard to argue. Like if you see a YSG, he's going to get hit first too. So it is what it is, but you can decide for yourself, which one you want primary. It's, it's really up to you. Um, Kiera, let's talk about Kiera, right? Okay. Where is she? She's all the way down here. Cause she's one of the, he, she's one of the newest ones added to the game. Okay. She came into the game when I, by the time I, she came in, I was already done using Epic. So that's why she's all the way down here, but I did finally expertise her, which is nice. Kiera YSG. This is a really interesting combo. I need to take a sip of soda. I've been talking for a long time so this is going to do even more skill damage than kusunoki but it doesn't have that removal of the uh of, of the debuffs right it also has fewer stats which is unfortunate but again this is a full aoe build kiro ysg is really really good ysg obviously giving you a ton of uh, of skill damage Kiera also doing the same thing, although it's a 10% chance of 80 instead of a flat 50 all the time, but they do kind of go hand in hand, which is really, really nice. A thousand damage factor, additional damage factor over time. 1400 damage factor for an epic is insanely good. Um, you also could potentially in KVK2 or yeah, I guess you couldn't possibly have an expertise Kiera in KVK1. You could technically rally with Kiera in YSG. Now, you obviously can't be the only rally. There has to be a tanking rally first because this is a very squishy rally, right? But Legend Roni did post a video where there was a coordinated attack on a 164 million power player and Roni used a Kiera with YSG. It was his, I think his altar farm account or something like that. And I had a pretty good uh, battle report, right? So technically you could do that. Kiara is, I think, probably underrated for an epic because she came into the game so late and it takes forever to get those sculptures of her. So yeah, it is what it is. But uh, again, Kiara with YSG, really solid. You can also use them for instant scenario battles, which is really, really good. Finally, talking about somebody other than YSG, you could do a Herman primary, El Cid secondary. Now this is a combination that everybody has talked about at one point or another. And the benefit of this is that you have a nice single target damage factor, but it's also a unique silence chain. So Herman will silence them for two seconds, which means they're not going to use their active skills during that time. And then followed by that, you're going to have El Cid's active skill go off, which is going to not only silence them, but disable them for uh, one second. So they won't even gain rage for that second. They won't even deal normal attack damage for that one second. So this is a unique chain where for three seconds, the enemy just can't use active skills, which is about 30% of the time. Really, really nice stuff there. Really cool. Um, again, single target damage 
damage factor on both these guys. The single target damage factor on Herman is actually really, really good for an epic 1150. Crazy stuff here. You're also getting uh, some stats, some March speed. You get March speed on El Cid as well. So there's some nice synergy there. Plus you get some rage regen from Herman, which is really cool. So yeah, interesting combo, not one that I've used, but one that I could use because I do really have them at a usable uh, rate. Now El Cid, I would do five, five, one, one. And of course these last two, wherever they land is wherever they land. Uh, if you want this skill maxed, you could go for it. This will give you the most amount of stats. But if you do ever want to use El Cid, for example, as a secondary in a garrison or something like that, then you may want to just leave both of them and just let the chips fall where they may. All right, finally, we've got some mixed marches because we have Ethel Fled and she's a legendary that everybody is going to get. And I sort of treat Ethel Fled like a, like a super epic, right? And that's not to say that she's worse than the legendaries. I mean, you know, there's obviously legendaries that are better than her. Some legendaries are worse than her, right? That some legendaries, like I think Makuzuma is worse and he's a new commander, right? So anyway, uh, Ethel Fled really, everyone knows what she does, right? Nice. AOE, nice AOE debuff. There's a lot to love about here. Dealing extra damage with mixed units is great. Okay, Ethel Flood is insanely good for a legendary commander. You could pair her with somebody like Sun Tzu, and this is going to do a lot of AOE damage. It's going to do some rage generation. The skill damage buff is nice for Ethel Flood. There's so much to love about this combo. The downside, of course, is that it will be swarmed down very, very fast, right? It's, it's just, it's going to happen. I'm guaranteeing it. I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. But really really nice open field march i would do 90 percent infantry five percent cav five percent archers just so you can get that little bonus damage from ethel fled with her i think it's fourth skill yeah 20 percent increased attack so really nice stuff there now of course you could do a sun Tzu primary ethel fled secondary if you wanted to maximize that uh, infantry tree right which is nice but honestly I, I don't know again i just don't like having purple emblems out in the open field it's just to me it's a huge target on my on your back like hey kill me now um which you know so is ethel flood but at least the yellow blends in with the yellow a little bit right so they got to be looking for an ethel flood regardless you can make the decision for yourself which one you prefer i can make an argument for both sides to be honest um next we're going to talk about uh, an, actually a double legendary combo which i know i know that's against the title of the video but again i sort of treat ethel flood like a like an epic because everyone's going to get her expertise eventually and that is an ethel fled ysg again this the only reason that this is in the video is because ethel fled is free and everyone's going to get her which is basically what an epic is it's a freak matter everybody gets over time so is ethel fled right so ethel fled primary esong secondary this is a really 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 good aoe combo i use this personally in my sunset canyon team um really really i cannot infinite i can't emphasize this enough really strong aoe damage right you're getting a huge buff from a song Ye. you're also getting some uh rage regeneration here which is nice i love this combo in this instance you would use 90 percent archers five percent infantry five percent cavalry that's going to give you the attack buff over on ethel flood's fourth skill and everything else is self-explanatory it's just aoe everywhere now again you will be targeted you will be swarmed down this is you know it's such a threat on the open field that it, people are going to destroy you right um this is sort of a glass cannon you're going to be popping off insane amounts of damage but people are going to kill you very fast because of it so keep that in mind you'll probably fill your hospital pretty fast but it is a very effective uh march that you could use especially if your alliance or your kingdom uh, has a huge advantage in the open fields you're outnumbering them like crazy and they just can't hit everyone this is a great march to bring to that open field finally we can start to talk about a commander such as mulan you could if you dared could do a Mulan Joan of Arc. This is a super maximum support march that combines a legendary 5511 with a Joan of Arc. Now, this 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 combo is the one that I would recommend the least out of this entire video. It's just something that you could do. If you just wanted maximum support, you didn't want to deal any damage, you didn't care that you can't take any damage, you just want to support everybody around you, this is a pair that you could use. Um, again, you will be targeted immediately and you will just crumple like paper but this is again a legendary epic combo now you also could do something like ethel fled joan of course if you wanted to do that's another very supportive march in the open field um again it will crumple like paper and that is pretty much it this video was way longer than i thought it would be but hopefully you guys sort of understand my theory when it comes to pairing commanders together right we talked about joan of arc and sun tzu a lot in this video and that's again because there's just they're all different pieces they're all interchangeable pieces that you can use to build various different armies depending on what you need right and that's the whole point of this video to tell you guys what i think the most versatile 
epic commanders are and most versatile legendary commanders are and how you can sort of piece them together depending on do you have the open field advantage do, do you need to support your alliance or do you need to deal aoe damage or do you need to tank like what do you need to do these are all of the combinations that i would recommend for free to play low spenders things of that nature guys if you enjoyed this video if you found it useful or entertaining or informative or anything like that if it was helpful again drop a thumbs up on it it helps the video get seen by other players which helps my channel a ton again it's quick it's free and it really helps also if you're new around here subscribe to the channel 75 percent of you guys are not subscribed right so only 25 percent are click that sub button and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of Crimson video it helps again my channel a ton it's fast it's free and you can always unsub later if you don't like the content just unsub when you're tired of me comment down below your favorite legendary epic pairing i would love to hear from you guys i'm sure there's ones that i missed so i would love to hear your thoughts as always my social media links are in the description make sure you follow me over there on instagram twitter facebook discord all that stuff is down there always and there's a link to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc or your Mac. It's a program called Blue Stacks. It's my favorite way to play Rise of Kingdoms. You can play it on a much bigger screen. It looks absolutely beautiful and it helps in those big open field fighting scenarios where you're trying to just click on the little Jonah Bark that's running across the screen and you can't because your fingers are too fat and your phone is lagging. <laughs> Blue Stacks helps with that and I think it gives you a nice little advantage. So again, it's free. If you don't like it, you can always uninstall it, but I would recommend giving it a try. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.